what's out there? That's the big question and we want to get the answers. So we reached out today in regards to the anomaly that was discovered 24 hours ago. Astronomers say whatever it is, it's very odd. We speak with Michael Rich. He takes my phone call. He's from the UCLA Physics and Astronomy Division. Also, I contact the Astronomical League and speak with the president, Ron Kramer, and try and find out to see if they've got information in regards to the anomaly that was discovered. Take a look and listen to the investigation as we do it right here at Third Phase of Moon. All right, the Astronomical League. We're gonna reach out to the president. Ron Kramer might pick up the phone and we can maybe get some uh, answers from him. Again, this is a cold call. We're just doing a raw investigation trying to get down to the bottom of whatever this is that was captured in this image that's quite incredible. Hello, Ron Kramer. Hey, Ron, how's it going? Good, good, good. Yeah, my name is uh, Blake Cousins, and uh, allow me to introduce myself quickly. I run a YouTube channel. I wanted to get your uh, opinion on something that was uh, kind of catching people's eyes in regards to an astronomy uh, anomaly on a, video, on a photograph from the worldwidetelescope.org. Okay. You mind if I uh, just record uh, this conversation? I want to get your opinion exactly uh, what was kind of making the rounds as of the past 12 hours of an uh, image. Okay. Yeah, I could do that. Great, Ron. Appreciate it. You are the president of Astronomical League. Can you tell us a uh, little bit about it? Yeah, sure. Uh, we're an organization more like a federation. Um, we have member clubs. Each of these clubs has uh, anywhere from a couple to several hundred individual members. At the last count, uh, our head count of individuals uh, uh, pertaining to these clubs is in excess of 18,000. And we have about 300 clubs as members. Well, I think you're the person that I, exactly I need to get in touch with because uh, uh, are you familiar with the WorldWideTelescope.org? And I think part of some of the imagery is coming in from uh, the Schmidt Telescope. But I just wanted to talk to an expert in regards to uh, this new discovery. And uh, maybe you could take a look at it and uh, get back to me. Or you might want to take a look at it now and then uh, I could get your opinion. I could direct you through the map on how to find this anomaly pretty quickly. And, and I want to... I, I want to get you this video. Um, you know, I run a channel and it's in regards to the search for uh, extraterrestrial existence. And um, these astronomers are capturing things that sometimes they can't explain. And there's a kind of a, a disagreement between Canada, France and Harvard about the Oumuamua. And we're just asking the big question. So I'm gonna send you a link to my video that we just posted. And I think it's approaching over 35,000 views and there's hundreds and hundreds of comments of exactly uh, people just commenting on what this object could be. And I just w want to get this, you know, astronomers, your fellow uh, sure. league together and maybe give us just a straight answer, answer one way or the other opinions. So look forward to sending that to you, Ron. Yeah, I can look at that again. It would be later, it would be later in the day, so I'd be able to respond tomorrow. All right, absolutely. I'll send you uh, my contact in the video that I'm referring to and uh, you can take a look at that and look forward to hearing back from you, Ron. Let me get your email. Okay, thanks. I'll send it over uh, here in a bit. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. Talk to you right. soon. Well, well, thank you. Take care. Okay, Bye. man. Okay, uh, that was uh, Ron and he was pretty gracious enough to g give us a pretty much impromptu interview. He's going to get back to us. So now we got two leads. We got uh, Caltech and we got the... Uh, Astronomical League and the president. Maybe we're going to get some answers here real soon. Stand by for that. All right, we're going to get in touch with uh, UCLA now and we're going to get, hopefully, the astronomer Michael Rich. He's a research astronomer. Cold call right now to UCLA. Hello, Hello uh, Michael? Yes. Hey, how's it going? Let me uh, introduce myself quickly. My name is Blake Cousins. And um, yeah, I run a YouTube channel with approximately uh, 800,000 subscribers. And um, mm -hmm. recently we did this uh, video yesterday in regards to the WorldWideTelescope.org, how they stitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're familiar with that? Yes, um, just want to make sure it's not uh, Las Cumbres Observatory. So this is the WorldWide Telescope. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I yeah I, I should be familiar with it. Okay, great. Hey, you know, I do my YouTube channel. And, uh, you mind if I? I've been speaking with a few astronomers already, and they're allowing me to record the conversations. I'm just uh, asking some simple questions in regards to an anomaly that was uh, captured in one of the frames. Uh, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Let me actually. What I want to do. Let me put you on speaker. Hold on. This is. I'm just going to try to find this worldwide telescope. Absolutely. Uh, Michael, can you tell us uh, quickly, what do you do over there at the UCLA? What, uh, uh, you're a I'm research, a research astronomer? astronomer? And uh, also uh, adjunct professor, uh, and I'm um, you know, involved in a number of projects. I, I was on the Galax Galaxy Evolution Explorer science team. Uh, I have a Wikipedia page if you need more information um, and a, a website, but there's a number of things that I'm running. Uh, the Halos and Environments of uh, Nearby Galaxies Project um, and a project called the Blanco Decam Bulge Survey. So uh, stellar astronomy and uh, research astronomer. All right, great. Uh, it, yeah, it seems like you're uh, one of the people that we definitely need to talk to. So yeah, when you pull up the site, apparently we, uh, you know, it was discovered approximately 24 hours ago by a name of Scott Waring. And he, you know, he searches searches uh, everywhere, just looking for anything that's uh, anomaly. And uh, this one definitely caught my eye. And, um, you know, we ran with the story yesterday and it's received like over, it's approaching 40,000 views on it and we're getting uh, hundreds and hundreds of people commenting on whatever this thing is. And we're just wanting to get, uh, you know, the expert's opinion of what it could be and what it isn't. Yeah, um, sure. So. First of all, I just need to get familiar with what the uh, anomaly is because I don't know anything about it. Well, you know, some uh, there's people out there that believe in that there's a possible, you know, life existence that's out there, and there's some interstellar craft that are being captured in uh, some of these uh, photographs, these stitches, and uh, you know, with the Oumuamua being uh, out there with Harvard and uh, Canada, France having disagreement exactly what it could be. People are even speculating it more. I can tell you with uh, Oumuamua that there is no question that it's a natural uh, object. Could you explain on how the Oumuamua uh, uh, sped up, slowed down, and some of the characteristics of it seem to uh, defy well, like logic? There still needs to be more analysis of its, um, uh, of its ephemeris. Um, but the people here, like you have here at UCLA, David Jewett, who is the, probably the world's expert on um, objects like Oumuamua. He discovered what's called the Kuiper Belt, and I had asked him about you know non-natural explanations because he actually works on a class of objects called active asteroids that um, do emit jets of material, even though they're in locations where this would not be expected. Um, and he just says it's, it's not even. I mean, it's not even if if. Somebody like Jewett, it's not even on his radar then. I mean, also, if it was that big a deal, he would have been on the paper. I mean, that's hard to explain, but I mean, he's the world's expert on this kind of subject. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I could uh, respect his, his uh, expertise as well. But then people are also saying, well, Harvard came out with this statement yeah, I mean, saying Harvard that it could be an interstellar craft from another... For Avi Loeb, uh, but he he is not known for his work on the solar system, and you know, uh, I you know I, I would say uh, there are a lot of uh, there are so many issues with the Oumuamua claims that I you know I, I really I have an open mind, and you know of course there are things of bigger concerns like the things spotted by Navy pilots, right? So you know those are. Those are concerning, um, but Oumuamua does not, you know, rank in my my area as a concern. But what about this anomaly? What yeah, is it? And absolutely. Uh, Ab <laughs> okay, so let's get to the worldwide uh, telescope dot org. Are you on that site now? Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm on the web client. Yeah. Okay, if you could find the Orion's Belt and down, uh, look for the Orion's Belt. Kind of a uh, push in on that. Okay. Now, I have to figure out how this, this is, uh, let me just, uh, orientate yourself a little bit, let it load, but yeah, it's yeah, like, no, I'm, I'm just, 
what I'm trying to do is to, I, I'm not in the right part of the sky. So, you know, I don't know what the origin of the images is on this app, whether they're it came from famously renewed or... Apparently the f image was captured in 1995 on the, on the Schmidt telescope out of uh, Caltech. I could say that the image, I have a little bit of data on it. And the data states that it was, the image was taken 1995 it was the exposure time was about 2700 seconds and the telescope was a the ocean schmidt yeah yeah i i know which one um i assuming that this were was to be an actual thing um there is an original plate that uh photographic plate this was obtained from uh and the first thing that you know one would want to do would be to go get the original. Uh, I mean, there's a so if you're really interested in following this up, absolutely, I would I would do is to go uh, determine the position of this thing. I still can't actually find it. Uh, you're gonna find it. It's there. So it's it was somewhere down. Oh, there it is. Okay. You found it. Yeah, um, okay, I found it. Um, it's kind of a jaw dropper, isn't it? If I were going to, actually, if I were going to, like, speculate what I think it is, um, very likely, first of all, you'd want to go and and look for it in the original, um, you really want to look for it in the original um, uh, plate, okay? So the original data set. And so I would go to NASA Skyview and try to, you know, look at um, that position. I'll tell you what I believe it is. Uh, in all likelihood, um, it's blue. This is a piece of so these, these images are made from scanned photographic plates. And so photographic plates have emulsion on them. And when they're developed, sometimes other things stick to the plate and so on. So the first thing that I would check would be to see, um, you know, whether this is seen on any particular plate, on just one plate. Okay. The, second thing is that if this were moving, uh, a 2,700 second exposure is a long exposure. And it's actually 45 minutes. So it would trail. Uh, even if it were if it were in our solar system and moving, it would trail. Umo Mea would trail on this length of exposure. That means it would not be so sharp and would not be seen as one object. So given you know, I, it is a very odd thing, um, but given its appearance and so on, I would suspect. Oh, okay. I'll. Uh, I w I've got to go uh, because I've got a meeting that I have to go to. But I would suspect this is a piece of emulsion uh, that uh, folded over on the plate. Let me ask uh, just maybe two questions. If it were emulsion, would you maybe find this artifact, this anomaly, in other uh, pictures uh, in the plates? Well, you you would find it in one image um, if it were a folded piece of emulsion, if it was a kind of a, a plate flaw. It looks like a plate flaw to me. We've, uh, like, there was a lot of scanning on the map itself. We've yet to find any anomaly that looks anything particular as defined as this. What we need it. to do is get, go back to the original photographic plates. Do you, uh, do you agree maybe possibly if this were some kind of uh, object in this in the space and it was stationary like you say for over 45 minutes and did not move well i guess that you know if it were geostationary orbit and it were really um and, and it were uh station keeping to the point where it wasn't even moving at all not rotating not moving then it might be um in geostationary orbit but i don't think it's real I do have to apologize. Uh, I have to go to a meeting. Okay. I appreciate your interest, but what I say, you've got a bit of homework, which would be to
to try to go to NASA Skyview, try to find out, you know, also you can contact uh, whoever puts together that site, contact them about it and ask them if they could provide you with the raw data, like the scan of that particular, of all of the plates in that area, and try to see if it's on only one plate. But I have seen stuff like that on photographic plates. I used to uh, take photographic plates uh, and front the telescope, and it looks like a piece of emulsion. If that object is seen on more than one plate, I doubt it. Um, it looks to me like it's probably just a, a an emulsion flaw that, you know, oddly, or some kind of, you know, it does not look like an interstellar craft. Okay. I got you, Michael. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks for taking my call and interview. Talk Thank to you soon. Thank you so much. Yep. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks. Well, uh, Michael's uh, statement, uh, it's not an interstellar, uh, interstellar object in his opinion, and uh, he, he's pretty much... Uh, has the authority to make that claim, but he did say to find the original plates, get down to see what the original plate's all about and get in touch with the web system, the people who created the worldwidetelescope.org and see if they got any explanations. But, uh, well, that's coming in from UCLA. Uh, we got some more updates. Stand by everybody right here at Third Phase of Moon. We're on it. <laughs>